Why is Goblin Piledriver never sad? Because he has protection from the blues. <laughs> this video is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc. If you're looking for cards in the US, look no further as you can use the promo code MTGMUDSTA to get you 5% off anything on the site. You can also use the promo code MTGMUDSTA for 5% off your orders from Face to Face Games, Canada's largest Magic the Gathering store, with qualified orders getting free shipping Canada wide. And if you just want to help out the channel, you can always consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month and join the generic Goblin Gang. Hey, this is Andrew from MTG Mudsta, and today I'm proud to announce that the video is sponsored once more by Into the AM. They're running a fantastic sale from today, June 30th, until July 4th as their 4th of July celebration. If you've been eyeing some sweet graphic tees, or even just some plain basic tees, they're super comfortable like the one I'm wearing right now, and you can now get it for 20% off. If that sounds interesting to you, be sure to use the link below to let them know that I sent you there. Hey gang, and welcome back. Today's game finds us back at Kessel Run Game, with Shane playing Brian Stoutarm, Keeping a Mountain, Sunbig Canyon, Rugged Prairie, Ghostly Prison, Archaeomancer's Map, Commander's Sphere, and Zealous Conscripts. Chris is playing Calamax, Keeping a Holdout Settlement, Simic Signet, Wasteland, Farseek, Island, Ancient Tomb, and A Birds of Paradise. Eric is playing Tovalar, Keeping a Rogue's Passage, A Mountain, A Talisman of Impulse, Green Sun Zenith, Village Messenger, The Great Henge, and Heroic Intervention. David is rocking a roomie, keeping Grey Merchant of Ashfidel, Myriad Landscape, Forbidden Alchemy, Undead Butler, Star Compass, Gravebreaker Lamia, and a Demir Aqueduct. Shane wins an eye roll and starts us off. He plays a mountain, passing. Chris draws, plays an island, and passes. Eric draws and has a mountain as well casting Village Messenger. He gets first blood by swinging one at Shane, and passes turn. David draws, plays a myriad landscape, and passes. Shane draws, plays a rugged prairie, and casts Arcane Signet. Chris has a holdout settlement, and ships the turn. Eric plays a forest, and casts Green Sun Zenith where X is zero, going to find a Dryad Arbor. Moving to combat, he swings the now flipped Moonrise Intruder at David, dealing two. David draws and plays a Demir Aqueduct, bouncing the land back to hand. He discards the Grey Merchant of Ashfidel and passes. Shane has a mountain and then casts Archaeomancer's Map, going to grab two planes before passing turn. Chris draws and plays another island and then pays two for Simic Signet. He follows up with a Farseek, going to find a Cinder Glade, and passing. Eric flips back the Messenger, and draws. He plays a Rogue's Passage, and then plays Talisman of Impulse. And then taps enough for Tovalar. Eric then swings the Village Messenger at Chris, dealing one, and draws a card. He then passes to David. David draws, and replays the Myriad Landscape. He then casts a perpetual timepiece and activates it, milling himself for two. Shane has a planes for turn and casts Commander's Sphere and then brings out his commander, Brian. After that, he passes turn. Chris draws and plays a Ship and Reef. He plays a Birds of Paradise and then a Rhystic Study, passing to Eric. Eric draws and moves straight to combat. He swings Tovalar at Chris and the Messenger at David, and they both take their hits. After combat, he plays a Soul Ring and then casts Cultivate, finding a basic for the field and then a forest to play for turn. Finally, he plays a Night Pack Ambusher and passes to David. David draws and plays a Rumi, then activates a Perpetual Timepiece, milling himself for two. With nothing else, he passes to Shane. Shane has a mountain for turn, and plays an Aetherflux Reservoir, and then casts Ghostly Prison, paying the study tax and gaining two life. Chris draws and plays a Timber Crown Pathway, and now has enough mana to cast Calamax. He then taps Calamax with the Holdout Settlement to help cast Twinning Staff, and passes. On Eric's upkeep, because he controls three or more wolves or werewolves, it becomes Knight. 
and he then transforms his human werewolves thanks to Tovalar. He then plays the Great Henge, and Chris responds by countering it with the Fierce Guardianship. Eric follows that up by going to combat, swinging Tovalar at Shane, the Moonrise Intruder at Chris, and Nightpack Ambusher at David. They each take their damage, and Eric draws three cards. Eric then plays a Mountain, and casts a Breakneck Rider before passing turn. David draws her turn, and then mills himself for two by tapping the timepiece. He plays and cracks an Evolving Wilds, finding a Swamp, and then activates a Rumi to encore a Playcrafter, which has everyone sacrificing three creatures or discarding cards. This effectively wipes the board except for Eric's Breakneck Rider and the Dryad Arbor, and David passes once that's done. Shane draws and plays a Mage Rite Stone, and then casts Brian again, and gains some life, and passes turn. Chris's turn has him drawing and playing an Ancient Tomb, and then using it to help recast Kalamax, taking two. After that, he taps Kalamax to the Holdout Sediment to cast a copied Crop Rotation, and sacrifices an island to go and grab three lands, thanks to Twinning Staff adding an extra extra copy. He grabs Taiga, Sulphur Falls, and Stomping Grounds, paying two life to shock the land in. He then casts a Felwar Stone, and passes to Eric. Eric draws and plays a Mountain. He casts a Guardian Project, and then recasts Tovalar, drawing a card as his commander enters. He then swings the Breakneck Rider at Chris. Before moving to damage, Chris responds by casting a Pongify, which is copied twice, targeting Eric's three creatures. Eric responds to the targeting by casting Heroic Intervention to give them all Hexproof. Chris then takes three, and after drawing some cards, Eric passes turn. David draws and plays a tapped Dismal Backwater, gaining one. He activates the Perpetual Timepiece once more, milling two and passing. Shane draws for turn and plays Insurrection, gaining one life. Chris responds by casting Harrow, sacrificing an island to go and grab six untapped basics, and the Insurrection then resolves. Moving to combat, Eric gets all the commanders swung at him, while David gets the Neckbreaker. This has Eric taking a total of 19 commander damage from various commanders, and David taking 5. Once that's done, Shane uses the Mage Rite Stone to untap Brian, and then flings Tovalar at Eric's face. With nothing else, Shane passes turn. Chris draws and plays a Mountain. He swings Kalamax at Shane, and before damage, casts a Prophetic Bolt, copying it twice and dealing 8 damage to Shane before combat damage and killing Brian. Shane then takes 12 from Kalamax. In his post-combat main phase, Chris then plays out a Soul Ring, and then casts 3 visits. He goes to find a land, and passes turn. Eric draws, and plays a Command Tower. He then replays Tovalar, and then a Cassig Naturalist, and goes to combat. He swings the Breakneck Rider at Chris, dealing 3. He then draws a card from Tovalar, and passes turn. David draws, and activates the timepiece milling himself for two. He then activates a Rumi to encore Gary, and with the three Grey Merchant triggers on the stack, Chris responds by overloading Cyclonic Rift, so that the ability resolves with no Black Devotion for David. Once that's done, David passes turn. Shane draws and plays a Zealot Conscript, targeting Kalamax as it enters. Chris responds by using Deflecting Spot on the trigger to make it steal itself. Shane then replays an Arcane Signet, and follows up with an Archaeomancer's map, going to find two planes, and passes to Chris. On Chris's upkeep, Eric casts a Moon Mist to stop him from just killing everyone with Kalamax. Chris then draws and plays a Gruel Signet, and then casts Ral Storm Conduit. He then taps Kalamax to cast a Blasphemous Act, and follows up with an Increasing Vengeance to copy it. He gains a copy from Kalamax in the Twinning Staff, 
This has a vengeance making a vengeance, which will make a vengeance and a vengeance, and creates an infinite loop of copies, with Ral pinging the table and giving Chris the win. Game review time. I'm not really sure how to review this one. There were a lot of really swingy plays, like when David brought back that Grey Merchant of Ashvidel, that seemed like it was going to take out a lot of people. It just seemed like Chris had a lot of perfect answers, as that cyclonic rift pretty much stopped that play in its tracks. In a similar vein, I loved the insurrection, and it was cool seeing Eric take four types of commander damage in one swing. Speaking of Eric, he seemed to draw a lot of cards in his Tovalar deck, whether it was from the Guardian Project, which still surprises me how good that card is, and Tovalar himself. I think one of the biggest things for Chris was that unimpeded Rhystic Study, and although he wasn't drawing a card from every spell, he certainly drew more than two. That, combined with the fact that Kalamax and Twain Staff were out in conjunction, meant that every time when he cast an instant when his commander was tapped, he was getting two extra copies and two plus one plus one counters. As you saw, that added up very quickly, and Kalamax was hitting for upwards of 12 sometimes. This video wouldn't be possible without the help from my sponsors, Cool Stuff Inc., Multizone, Original Magic Art, and Alter Sleeves. But it definitely wouldn't be possible without the help from you, the viewers, and my patrons. So I just want to say thank you for watching, and to remember, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.